Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Jan Michael here. And I'm Melinda. Over the past year, we've reviewed 10 films that have won Best Picture at the Oscars. And they've ranged from pretty dang good to what the hell were they thinking? But in what order do we rank them? Well, those are the answers we're going to start giving to you today. Welcome to a very special episode of Pecking Order. <laughs> so like all good lists, we gotta start at the bottom with our number 10. A relationship, I think, is, is like a shark. You know, it has to constantly move forward or it dies. And I think what we got on our hands <clears throat> is a dead shark. Annie Hall is the 50th film to win Best Picture and stars everyone's favorite pedophile, along with Diane Keaton. It makes the bottom of our list because it's one of those films that has not aged well in terms of themes and lead character behaviors. Titular Annie Hall is the only redeeming character of the film but it's definitely not enough to make up for all the shortcomings. The writing can be funny from time to time, but a lot of it is upset by just how unlikable the lead protagonist is. Not only being constantly misogynistic, but also very rude to his own friends. Worse is that he's painted as a sympathetic person, which just, no, no! This is just guilty of being plain awful. It's a wonderful world, if you'll only take the time to go around it. Are you formally challenging me to undertake a journey around the world in 80 days? Around the World in 80 Days is the 29th film to win Best Picture and stars David Niven, Cantiflas, and for some reason, Shirley MacLaine? Uh, this is the film that popularized the movie cameo, and boy does it show! Almost every actor from Under the Sun back then has some sort of presence here, even if they don't say a single word. Hey, you think in that regard, the film would be an interesting watch, but at just over three hours long, it's more of an excruciating experience. Many of the scenes drag on for far too long and lack any excitement to them. And can someone explain why Shirley MacLaine was cast as an Indian princess? Some of the comedy that Cantine Fles brings is entertaining, and David Niven can be quite charming at points but it doesn't justify the movie's slow pace and unnecessary length. This film is definitely the definition of full of hot air. Recognize that fellow? His name is Marty. Never heard of him, hmm? Well, you will, because we made a picture about him. Marty is the 28th film to win Best Picture and stars Ernest Borgnine in the film that proved that he could be leading man material. Falling just short of being great, Marty's biggest problem is it feels unfinished. It needed to either tie up loose ends or give us endearing characters with redeemable qualities to make up for the shortcomings, but it fails to deliver on either front. A proper ending would have been nice too. Ernest Bornine does bring charm to the role and he shows that he's capable of holding his own, but the film just doesn't feel like a completed product. Story threads are left unfinished, there's no real resolution to anything, and poor Betsy Blair is last shown crying, and the finale doesn't cure us of that final image of her. We wouldn't go out on a second date with this one. John Nash was one of the most brilliant minds of his generation. Welcome to Princeton. Who among you will be the next Einstein? A Beautiful Mind is the 74th film to win Best Picture and stars our favorite fighter, Russell Crowe, who, surprisingly enough, plays a very good John Nash. This is by no means a bad film, but it is a safe film, which ultimately makes it very forgettable. Russell Crowe and a lot of the supporting cast do good jobs. It has some strong scenes throughout. And if you can forgive its liberties with the real story, you may find it an enjoyable watch. Even if Jennifer Connelly can come off as unseasoned in it. The story is completely Hollywoodized and can come off as predictable, which results in some missed opportunities at telling a very unique tale. But after all is said and done, it's not that bad of a watch. Maybe not so much a beautiful mind, but an interesting one nonetheless. Young Will Shakespeare is having a bad year. 
His last two shows flopped. <laughs> the theater is about to go bankrupt. Shakespeare in Love is the 71st film to win Best Picture and stars Joseph Fiennes and Gwyneth Paltrow in what is said to be one of the most surprising Oscar upsets ever. The film on its own had pretty decent writing and some humor throughout, and even though the whole thing is grossly over the top, it's not a terrible watch. If you're looking for a good period piece comedy, you can do a lot worse than this. Now the film does come off as bland and doesn't really leave any lasting impression. Heck, even the sets don't feel real, akin more to a renaissance fair than an actual living condition. And can someone tell me how Judy Dench won an Oscar for a few minutes of screen time? Oh, one of the few shining lights is Gwyneth Paltrow though, who thankfully has enough screen time to make the film worth seeing to some degree. Still, the fact that this won over Saving Private Ryan is a tragedy akin to Shakespeare. If I told you about her, the princess without voice, what would I say? The Shape of Water is the 90th film to win Best Picture and stars Sally Hawkins in a film all about fish sex. Okay, that's a bit too harsh. The film itself does attempt to tell a unique tale, and though it may stumble at points, it still does enough to make it worth the experience. Sally Hawkins in particular is exceptional in the film, as is the creature and set designs. A lot of the supporting casts are also fun to follow, even if the antagonist is painfully cliché. The movie has an interesting style that makes it feel as if you're sitting in a theater watching a stage production. It has a lot of creativity going for it. And its pacing is very strong, even if the romance is not. Which is a shame because it's the central focus of the movie. That being said, this is one that we both can recommend. It's definitely a strong catch. Music is the 38th film to win Best Picture and stars Julie Andrews and Christopher Plummer. For most people, this will be a very iconic and memorable movie. But even if you've never seen it, the impact can still be felt as it's become such an ingrained part of our society. The two leading roles are very entertaining and the songs are very catchy. It's not perfect as there are some pacing issues but it's still worth watching, especially if you haven't seen it before. The movie wouldn't have worked as well as it did if it weren't for the strong performances by Julie and Christopher. The children are also very enjoyable to watch, even if they do get pushed to the side at points. A lot of the story structure is gonna seem overly familiar to the average moviegoer, but cliches had to come from somewhere, and when it's this entertaining, you don't mind sitting through the more obvious plot points. Trust us, it's all music to our ears. Halt! Casablanca is the 16th film to win Best Picture and stars Humphrey Bogart in what is said to be the most quotable movie of all time. And there's a reason for that. Every scene is packed with detail. The characters are all very memorable, with maybe the exception of Paul Heinrich's Victor Laszlo. Uh, and the unique setting adds to the atmosphere of each scene. At the center of it is a romance that, while it may be melodramatic at points, still captures your attention and makes you wonder what will transpire next. Strong writing, great performances, and an ending that isn't afraid to deviate from the typical Hollywood ending makes this a film that should not be missed. It may not be for everyone, but even if you're hesitant on its premise, the impact that this film has had on our society is reason alone to witness it. Trust us, you don't want to regret missing out on this. Welcome to Camp Victory. Oh, Camp Victory? This was Camp Liberty. Oh no, they changed that about a, a week ago. Victory sound better. All right. The Hurt Locker is the 82nd film to win Best Picture and stars Hawkeye and the Falcon. 
in a movie all about the realism of war and the tragedy and psychological effects that it can have on a person. This is another film that suffers from the Hollywoodization process a bit, but still delivers enough impact to give you a taste of what someone in that situation may be going through. It doesn't shy away from the brutality of war, and there are plenty of moments that will leave you in suspense or shock. Catherine Bigelow became the first female to win Best Director for her work here, and it is very well earned. The film feels like a documentary at points, capturing moments that might have just transpired accidentally in the moment. But even when it centers on a more steady shot, it still delivers plenty of impact due to the performances on display. With lots of heart-pounding moments, this is one that completely blew us away. It Happened One Night is the seventh film to win Best Picture and stars Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert in what is currently our favorite film that has won the award. It's funny because in the grand scheme of things, the movie is a very simple one. It's a love story between two people that can't stand one another. But it's in its execution and charming characters that it manages to get us to fall for it. Mix that with a simple adventure and plenty of funny moments that you just can't help but grin at, and you truly have the makings of a classic. No wonder it won all five of its nominations. It's one of the few early century Academy Award winners that left a really big impression on us. It has tons of wit, clever writing, and comedy that has aged perfectly. The story moves at a good pace, and even when the film feels like it's being a little too mean, there's always another scene waiting to make you laugh or melt your heart. Sometimes it's not the most epic story or the greatest performance that captures our attention, but a simple tale that captures the essence of life that leaves the biggest impact on us. And it can happen all in one night. And that's it for our list for now. Keep in mind guys that this is just 10 best picture winners. There's still a lot more that we have to review and discuss, so keep a look out for those videos. And in due time, we will give you an update on this one. Yeah, and if you're interested in finding out how we process the ranking for this video, um, you can check out in the description below. Like always guys, leave us your comments in the areas below. Let us know how you would rank these films. And until next time, have a good one.